On this day, I climbed a tall cherry tree at the back of the barn. And as I looked toward the fields at the east, I imagined how wonderful it would be to make some device which had even the possibility of ascending to Mars. I was a very different boy when I descended the tree from when I ascended. Existence at last seemed very purposive. These are the words of Dr. Robert Goddard, born in Worcester, Massachusetts, an inventor of the modern rocket. Hey, Harry. Yeah, right. You know, we're sitting on four million pounds of fuel, one nuclear weapon, and a thing that has 270,000 moving parts. Despite the importance of Dr. Goddard's work towards spaceflight, Many during his time did not believe in his dreams. His first published paper received negative press, with many mocking Goddard's plans. However, from 1926 onward, Goddard was able to launch rockets. In 1929, this feat caught the attention of famous aviator Charles Lindbergh, who was best known for the first solo transatlantic flight. And back in 1927, there was a high-wing monoplane filled with fuel to bursting, climbing heavily above Long Island, vanishing from view. 33 hours later, Charles Lindbergh had flown non-stop New York to Paris, into the headlines of the nations, into the fable of the times. Lindbergh, who was intrigued by Goddard's success, became his advocate regarding his lack of funding. After contacting many different possible benefactors, Lindbergh eventually found a like-minded financier in the Guggenheim family. Yes, that Guggenheim. Because of his newfound funding, Goddard and his family were able to relocate to Roswell, New Mexico, where he and a team secretly worked on his rocket for years. As a result, the United States and the rest of the world were able to accomplish the unthinkable, sending man to space. As one small step for man, 